Okay guys, welcome back to the studio. This video is gonna get weird very quickly. In fact, I've tried to film this now about six times, but it's so multifaceted, I get off track quickly. So I'm gonna to try to get right to it. This is my one eight scale Cragsman from Traction Hobby. This is a scale trail crawler that is currently up on jacks right now, so it's off the ground. You'll notice, of course, that one of my tires is different. You've read the title and you can see the wheel weights here laying down on the table waiting to be installed. And I learned so much uh, while I was doing the other side. You'll see over there on the back side, looks like a, uh, a, a brake disc installed that I thought I would come online here and try to help you guys. If anybody does have this model or you're going for the one eight scale and you end up getting the traction hobby uh, made for this rig uh, wheel weight set. I hope this is gonna help you because there was no instructions in here. I had to muddle my way through it uh, and there was no video out there to help anybody or to help me when I needed it. Now a lot of people will ask me about the size of this vehicle uh, and I did do a comparison video to 15 other RC rigs. In fact, I'll leave a link in the video description uh, down below or maybe you can see the info tab over here. Uh, you can click on that to see me compare this against other vehicles. In fact, you can see a, a comparison, direct comparison between the TRX4 uh, uh, 1 tenth scale and uh, this 1 8th scale as well, just so you can see it yourself. Now I'm going to take off the tire here. This aluminum set I got at Asia Tees uh, uh, made by Traction Hobby. I've already installed the other side as you saw and really it comes with an aluminum uh, steering assembly and a C-hub. Also comes with a rear lockout right for the rear axle plus the uh, bearings and hardware that go with it and I was a little bit confused because in each one of these slots here's part of the steering arm by the way or how the steering arm will attach to this the throw rod in each one of these holes came three of these pieces and I couldn't quite figure it out to begin with even though it's a little silly I feel silly now right why would they do that? Well, of course, one for either side and then one on the front or if you want on the back, you can actually add on to that weight with the four other screws. Look how deep this is. And I never actually considered this uh, when I was using my other tires here, right? Look at the size comparison. They're enormous, right? Well, these 2.2 size crates, they actually come with a clamp on weight system. That weight system acts as a rotational mass and your axle has to do a lot of work to turn a heavy tire. Well, something like this actually gets installed right onto the axle itself. The housing doesn't move at all and the tire spins around it. So that means less stress on the axle stub. But I ran into some issues that I'm going to show you about uh, right away and I think you'll clearly be able to see it with me. These crate beadlocks, for example, and other beadlocks that are out there have these bumps where the screws mount the, the, the lock together and cinch it closed on the bead of the tire. Well, this is a little bit of a problem if you got a weight like this because this is supposed to sink right on the inside and sit nice and flush. Notice on these rims here, it has a huge offset on the inside. Looks like I'm giving you the bird there, but I'm not. <laughs> this actually fits on the inside very nice. So keep this in mind. You'd think I could add just a different offset right here, like a hex adapter, 12 millimeter hex adapter, like this, and then possibly run the drive pin and just get this in there. But there is a problem with that where you actually don't have enough thread on the end of the axle. But now that you kind of know that you want to stick with your stock tires or make sure you got a nice long offset there, uh, then you can pretty much be guaranteed that when you buy this, it's going to work with your setup, okay? That's the whole reason I just did that whole entire boring set. Please let me know if you're still watching because that would be awesome. <laughs> in the comment section. <laughs> anyway, let's move forward with the install and you guys can have some fun with this. 
Okay, so I did do a whole overview of this truck, of course, aluminum housings and all that. Uh, one of the things I wanted to point out that I liked about traction so far was attention to detail. For example, having a grub screw on your uh, hex adapter. It's not a new thing, that's for sure. This is the whole drive system. But when you have a grub screw on there and it helps pinch it to the axle, whenever you take off the tire, you don't have to worry about losing this in the snow or the mud or the sand. So attention to detail, awesome. Uh, out comes the drive pin. I have had this in ice, snow, slush, and water. You guys may have seen that video or not. Um, the bearings actually come new with the kit. So I'm glad to get rid of some of this plastic stuff. Even though I would normally say you would want to keep uh, your steering hubs plastic in trail crawlers where there's a lot of torque involved, I always suggest going to aluminum in your C hubs and steering assembly. Then I can remove the axle, pushing the axle stub through the bearing if I can. Yeah, no problem. Gonna add some grease in there. Now is a good time to do some maintenance, of course, on either side. So this side of the axle has a panhard bar. A panhard basically is an axle stabilizer. So there's two screws on the C-hub. They're very, very small. Uh, I'm gonna use some Loctite on the new aluminum ones. But one thing I've noticed on the other side was the clocking of the, of the preset um, C-hub to go on. Like there's only one way for it to go on there. And uh, I found that it was almost like it was clocked too much. Come on, gonna watch. I probably don't have both sides off. I'll be making a fool out of myself here one way or the other. Ah, oh, nice. Okay. So this has a flat spot right here and a flat spot on the other side. So there's only one way to slide these uh, C hubs on, which means non clockable, which means no adjustment. But this is a three link setup right here. Okay, I want you to keep in mind this top link. What was happening was when I was putting these on, these aluminum pieces, is it's almost like it was clocked wrong when they made it. I could be wrong, I'm sure I'm wrong, you know, it's hard to say. But it was almost like it was too, um, too far back. And when, you, when your steering is clocked wrong, you actually kind of steer on an angle instead of nice straight and forward, you know? It's really hard to, hard to explain. All right, just using a little bit of lightning lube, uh, bearing grease. Gonna make sure to work it in nice into the CVD joint. And I'm just gonna take my cloth and wipe off the extra. So now, Yes, it will still get some dirt and grime in there, but I do have it nicely protected uh, and I feel confident against the water, right? I don't want anything seizing up in there when it's going through the mud or the water, so I'm happy with that. Okay, same in the end right here. Just gonna put some grease through so the bearing gets some protection. Okay, so right here in the top, I'm gonna to be adding a collar. And the collar is to actually help uh, everything swivel. But because it's on top, it's a little bit of a challenge because it could keep falling out easily. So I just added a little bit of the grease that you can see using a nice white color so you can see easily there. Gonna pop that in and that grease is actually gonna hold it in spot for you. So if you're having a little bit of a hard time, I've shown this trick before, but so many people comment uh, in the comment section that this actually helps them. So now you're seeing it again. With the collars in, I'm gonna go ahead and place the bearings. Now I am gonna use some Loctite because this is aluminum on aluminum. Bar none, you can always guarantee that you're gonna have some sort of issue with your screws falling out on a mechanical piece that moves back and forth and it's uh, aluminum all the time. Okay, just using a small amount of blue Loctite. Starting to thread it down. Notice I'm doing it by hand, and this is so I can feel the precise amount of pressure I'm putting on, just like that. And then maybe just tighten it up a, a little bit because I don't want to um, wreck those threads. They feel pretty strong though, which is great.
These little steering pieces can, uh, this is a steering arm, this is where the steering rod will attach right here, can be a little confusing, but if you just keep in mind the shape of what you're looking at, you'll see that they fit in perfectly and they're flush right at the top. So I put the drive pin in, and this is a little bit of a crucial spot because you don't want to put the wheel weight on too soon. Number one, figure out which hex adapter you're using. This is the stock one, so I'm going to go ahead, tighten this up. That way I know it's never going to fall off. Then introduce the wheel weight. There is only one way it can go on. See? If you turn it, it fits in place perfectly. Again, four tiny screws. This will actually attach it to the whole steering assembly and it doesn't spin. There, everything's screwed in perfectly. And now I've got a weighted front axle, both sides. Okay, here is something that confuses me. This is the new steering rod that they give you uh, that goes on the front. But notice this. Here is the original steering ro rod. This one has a, a more of a bend to it, which is cool but is substantially larger. I don't understand, here it's longer, if you guys can't see it, but it is. If I put the rod ends on there, depending on the rod end themselves, here's the ones that come with it, that would be longer. So that would mean my tires are sticking out kind of funny like that. Now, like I said, I did have to clock the axle forward by adjusting that top uh, three link there. And by doing that, everything, the steering kind of lines up again properly instead of kind of being like on an angle, which looks funny. So uh, this is why it's important. Please, RC companies, anybody that owns an RC company that's listening, just throw in a small sketch or drawing of what stuff is supposed to look like because yeah hobbyists can figure it out but you know sometimes to use your product the most effectively it would be great to have some instructions on something like this notice if i hadn't done the uh, hex adapter before um, i put the weight on here i couldn't have done up the grub screw so that's why i did that now if you wanted extra extra weight on here you could go ahead and add on the extra ring See, pretty cool feature, hey? And then, and then that way you'd have a lot of weight. But I'm telling you, these brass pieces, they weigh quite a bit as it is. Now the rear of the vehicle is much more simple. It's just this lockout. So what we have to do is release this, remove the old lockout, put this lockout up there, and then mount the wheel weight around this. I'll show you. Is much different now. Wow, does it ever feel planted? And now, like, it, yes, it's gonna have to move all that extra weight, but it doesn't have rotational mass occurring. Look at that, all of my wheels are planted. I love how the truck stands. I love how it feels. By clocking that axle forward, look at this. I've got definitely the right angle for my steering. Doesn't look off or funny at all. I'm gonna go around the other side so you can have a good look at it. A nice all the way around look, block some of the light here. Yeah, excellent. Loving the look of this whole rig. So there you are, guys. Thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, hopefully you've enjoyed the show. Uh, let me know if you're still here. Did you make it to the end of the video? I know it was a long one, but uh, if you guys have been having a good time with it, that's all that matters. Boom, that's what she said, and we'll see you in the next episode of RC Adventures. Now get outside and have some fun with RC, or if you can't, at least do your maintenance. Man, get it done.